How's it going, guys? I'm Connor from Running Warehouse. Today, I'm here with Andrea. She is the Director of Engineering here at Saucony. And what is the hot topic right now? Carbon fiber plated shoes. Every brand has their version, and now Saucony has their own. This is the Saucony Endorphin Pro. Now, this shoe didn't just appear overnight. It's gone through several iterations. Andrea, can you guide us through where this shoe started? Absolutely, Connor. Thanks for being here. Yeah. So the material itself that we make the midsole foam out of is really the starting point. We knew we, we have great athletes. We have Molly Huddle, we have Jared Ward. We knew we could leverage them to make some product and great product for them. But it all comes back to the PIBA material. So we knew we had something special. Um, and as do uh, a few other brands at this point, and we can, we can be very blunt about that. And bringing to the table, uh, PIBA foam, and we call ours Power Run PB, uh, we started with a, a foamed PIBA, and we knew we had something special. It's very light, it's very responsive. Everybody talks about that. So we started with a non-beaded PIBA foam, and that's what we got our first samples back on. And yes, there's a carbon plate, and yes, uh, stack heights are a little higher, and we can get into the details of that, but we had a non-beaded foam. And when we first put it on Jared and he ran around in it, it performed very well, but it was a little less durable than we really wanted it to be. So we went back to the drawing board after some, some material testing and figured if we could do what we did with our power on foam and make beaded foam, we could increase the durability uh, quite a large percentage. So what are our initial shoes here, which is just kind of an everyday trainer upper on the plated non-beaded PIBA foam uh, turned into a bead foam. And the, this was really the starting point for us that we knew we had something special. The beads in the inherent cell wall reaction uh, really increases durability for the shoe. And you can get oh, upwards of 50% durability over the course of the life of the shoe, which is a very good performance marker compared to some of our competition. So from the beaded foam, we decided to start moving upward and work on the upper. Obviously, this is just an everyday trainer, and we wanted to really streamline what the guys would be racing in, the team would be racing in. So uh, we started tinkering around with, we actually put the Type A upper on, on this bottom unit. We actually put the, the Endorphin Racer, hence the name, <laughs> the Endorphin Racer up on the, the bead foam. and. Our, our athletes really, really were liking it. And a lot of people talk about efficiency, and efficiency is, is a huge part of the story, and economy is a huge part of the story. But one of the really interesting uh, feedback points from our athletes was how it protected them during the run. So ask any runner that's had to descend the staircase backwards after a marathon, uh, I think they can relate. You get a little beat up. And what we were finding with Power Run PBE is the athletes were feeling really good the next day or the days after their races. Um, shakeouts were going really well. Um, some athletes, Lindsey Corbin had said that the pain moved from quads to different muscle sets. And we thought we had something really interesting. So. We, we vacillated back and forth about stance of the shoe. A lot of the development work went into that plate contour and how the, uh, how the offset interacts with the position of the hips. So you want to get your hips forward and you want to be leaning forward and that's the speed roll technology is just kind of getting you up and ready to go. Um, so we, we tinkered back and forth about, you know, four mil offset, eight mil offset, but really came down to balancing that dis difference between speed going fast and covering that distance and really positioning the runner in um, a, a position of comfort and power and ability to move on through the gate cycle. So yeah, that's how we ended up there. So you talk about how the midsole has changed over versions, the upper sure. has changed over versions. That carbon fiber plate, was that something that you guys dialed in pretty early on or has that also gone through iteration? It was, it's funny, you know, when when you do this job long enough, you, you blow up shoes. It, it, you start and it goes oof, and you completely turn a 90 degree and go a different direction. Um, and sometimes you, you don't. Sometimes you get really close the first time. 
And I think once we moved past the foamed compound into the bead foam, we were really close. And our, our plate has re remained relatively unchanged the whole time. Um, it's a very stiff carbon plate. Um, like to yeah. play. Uh, and, and it really hasn't changed much. And I think that that inherently was what allowed us to tweak subtly all of these additions on the table uh, into you know, what, we, what we currently have here, which is something we're very proud of. And we really, it really works. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of different uppers we see here. There's one that's like completely <laughs> enclosed. When we're looking at different uppers, did any of these uppers help inspire that performance training version, the endorphin speed? For sure, yeah. Um, like I said, we, we got a sample back of the Endorphin Racer, which is a, a previous shoe of ours, and it was very lightweight. I think the shoe came in around six flat, and some of the, some of the athletes really, really, really liked it. It was super light, um, but it didn't, we didn't think it went the distance. I think when uh, a couple of the athletes wore it for, for more than a half marathon, there just wasn't enough there. It, it was a little chafing around the ankle. So I think with the next sample that we brought back that was the closest to where we ended up was, was something in this vein where it's, it's a very simple single layer engineered mesh, very little foam packaging, but yet they're enough to really protect you and hold on to you through the course of the, the marathon or longer distances. So we talk about athlete preferences. Of course, we've got Molly Huddle's version, Jared Ward's prototype version. What were the biggest things the athletes were asking for in an elite marathon racing shoe? Sure, yeah. The, a lot of the minutia is always around weight. They want the lightest weight shoe. They want a shoe that's obviously very comfortable that they can go a long distance in. Um, but I think the biggest and most important ask is that they have a shoe that they can go to the starting line and feel confident in no matter what race they're in and what stage they're on. And I think we really delivered here in, in getting them a shoe that they're proud to wear and we're proud as a brand to, to have them in. Yeah, I think heading into the Olympic trials, the last thing an athlete wants is for the race to be decided with a pair of shoes. So the Saki Endorphin Pro is gonna put athletes right there in the mix with every other pro athlete who's got their own carbon fiber plated shoe. I talked to Jared, he's not only confident that this shoe is gonna get him to the finish line, but he feels like he is at an advantage. You heard it from Jared, I personally am also excited to get these on my feet and you know maybe get my first marathon in them.